Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film Cool World from 1992. Cool World is the last theatrically released film by Ralph Bakshi. It's semi-notorious, and it does have a bit of a cult following, and it's a film I've always kind of wanted to see, and I never have. I've seen a lot of Ralph Bakshi films, and I've always kind of put this one off. I grew up seeing this advertised in, like, a ton of comic books, and I love the ads for it, and I always thought one day I'll see it, and I finally decided to watch Cool World. And Cool World is not a very good movie. In fact, it's it's like really bad. Another fact, I fell asleep twice because like it's hard to follow. There's too much going on in certain places. I'm not really sure what I saw in some sections. It seemed to be a clusterfuck of clusterfucks of a movie is what Cool World is. The thing about Ralph Bakshi is every time I've seen one of these movies, I respect them because there's only one type of movie like that. All of his films are a unique vision. And for an animated film, particularly at his time, which I think makes it even more incredible, Ralph Bakshi is absolutely one of a kind. And seeing his films is like seeing a vision you will never recapture again. And yes, Cool World does that. But Cool World is pushing that auteurish vision of liking a movie just because it's a unique and distinctive and different voice and takes a big shit on the face of that and makes you wish you did not support movies just because of that because this movie is just god awful. Now they had lots of trouble trying to make this film. It is often considered a kind of more edgier Roger Rabbit ripoff, which sort of it is sort of it isn't. I honestly don't even really know what it is. It has little echoes of Roger Rabbit. It's clearly they didn't have the budget or like Steven Spielberg or Richard Williams or Robert Zemeckis to make Roger Rabbit. They just had Ralph Bakshi. And I'm not going to say that, oh, Ralph Bakshi pales in comparison to those three guys because have you seen like anything Zemeckis has done in the last 10 years? But the thing is, is that film had a ridiculous amount of talented people working on it at once. And this film had Ralph Bakshi and a lot of fucking assholes. And that just frankly just turned out to be a horrible stink of a film that is really probably Ralph Bakshi's worst and is almost impossible and incomprehensible to get through, sadly. A character named Hollywood, who is, yeah, I know, the animated character in Cool World, which is full of not tunes, they're called doodles, because you know what they were called in Roger Rabbit, so... Anyway, so in Cool World, uh, there's a character named Hollywood, and she very much wants to become human, but can't unless she has sex with a human. The only human there is Brad Pitt's character known as Frank, who was brought to Cool World after he was in a motorcycle accident where he was riding a motorcycle with his mom, don't ask, and in the 40s, and then he was transported to Cool World, and then 50 years later, and he's not aged for, I guess you don't age in Cool World, that's just what will go on. Then in the 90s, Hollywood is trying to channel this guy who makes comic books, Jack Deeds, who has a highly acclaimed comic book series called Cool World as well, and somehow is drawing comics of the Cool World, but thinks he created it, but didn't. They don't clear that up. But so Hollywood is trying to channel him and constantly bringing him to Cool World. How she does this, I don't know. To kind of seduce him. And he's in jail in the beginning and then he gets out of jail. That never comes back. And then he goes back to his home, wants to start working on his comics, but then is sent back to Cool World. He has sex with Hollywood. Hollywood becomes human and is played by Kim Basinger. Jack is played by Gabriel Byrne. And then Brad Pitt's character of Frank finds out that they had sex and that she has become a human and has to track her down as Hollywood and Jack decide to go into the real world because Hollywood's always wanted to go there. Brad Pitt's character of Frank has to go and track them down to stop them from doing whatever and combining the cartoon world and the real world together as he has to stop them from letting that happen because he is the only cop in Cool World and has to enforce the one, the major rule that cart that doodles, sorry, not tunes, legally speaking, doodles cannot have sex with humans. Or at least that's what I think it's about because Gabriel Byrne starts suddenly turning into a cartoon and so does Kim Basinger and it's a whole bunch of mess. This was Ralph Bakshi's first film in nine years. In between that time he had a lot of false projects. He did a Rolling Stones video with John Kay which I slightly recommend. He did the Mighty Mouse series. He was doing things in between those nine years between Fire and Ice and Cool World but he wasn't making feature films. He suddenly was able to come back and make this film which apparently was 
was pitched as kind of a, hey, you like Roger Rabbit, I could do something like that with this movie, Cool World, which originally was more of a horror animated film, which if there's any genre that animation never really gets to do, especially in feature film, it's horror. There's not really that many animated films that do horror at all. So it's, it, that's actually still a problem. And I think something that would have been cool for Ralph Bakshi to do, and it was about, it features an underground cartoonist who is a half human, half cartoon daughter and she hates him and doesn't understand what she is and tries to kill the underground cartoonist and um how he has a half cartoon half person daughter they don't clear that i never found out but that was the original idea ralph back she had a script it was more of a horror thing and then it was rewritten by uh, michael grayus and mark victor who are most famous for writing poltergeist and before you go oh they sound pretty good the other person who wrote poltergeist is um steven spielberg so if you're wondering how much he had to do with poltergeist being written watch poltergeist and then watch poltergeist 2 all i'm saying and they didn't really write much after poltergeist 2 that's weird. The producer on this film, Frank Macuso Jr., who helped produce and helped start the beginning of the Friday the 13th franchise. And even though that would make sense, he would want to do a horror thing, but apparently did not think that was a good idea and rewrote the script. Him and Ralph Bakshi did not get along. And that this movie had a lot of production problems, like a lot of production problems. And it really didn't work out. They wanted Brad Pitt to play the underground cartoonist character instead of the detective character, which would have especially made more sense since he is like, like on the poster with Hollywood, not Gabriel Byrne. I've never seen a poster of this movie with Gabriel Byrne. And I've been looking at posters of this movie for like 20 years. I was like, oh, Gabriel Byrne's in this. Like I had no clue, like at all. But they wouldn't let Brad Pitt be that character because they didn't think he had leading man potential, but they thought he had leading man potential to be on the poster and like sell the movie. It just like seems like nobody really knew what to do with this movie or had a concentrated, distinct vision of cool world. And even Ralph Bakshi, like, with combining the live action and animation, they have, like, Hollywood, who is obviously rotoscope from Kim Basinger. And those parts work, and certain characters. But then, during scenes, they have animation jumping up in front of the screen. So it's not like often, and in, like, How to Train Your Dragon 2 is a great example, where they have a lot of stuff going on behind the characters that is interesting to watch. And on repeat viewings can be quite interesting. You can do that in animation. But this, it's literally in front of you. It's like this. Like, that's not a joke. That that's the way the animation is. And there'd be like a plane flying and hitting the screen. There'd be like characters dancing and they'd have this huge wide shot, which is like, why did they shoot it this way? It just seems like a bizarrely badly made movie. And I don't know why they made it that way. And Ralph Bakshi in that Rolling Stones video combined live action animation a lot better. I forget which video, I'll link it in the description, I'm sorry. But it's just so bizarre. And sometimes that animation that's really in front of the frame, bothering you, taking away from you watching the movie, Movie just suddenly stops like it's not like somebody goes oh I better get off the screen I'll go this way it was just like oh oh it's gone now for no reason why was it there it doesn't make any sense cool world has so much of that in it everyone I know who likes this movie and I said oh I watched cool world and I was like oh yeah you kind of need to be on a lot of drugs to like cool world and not in like that 2001 way in just like probably to make this movie semi bearable to like numb your pain just like how your mom numbed her pain with prescription pills just to deal with you that's kind of how you have to deal with cool world there's whole sections that aren't explained very well the animation live action thing is interesting because there's i know there are ripoffs of roger rabbit and you know space jam did it and space jam is a lot more fun than like something with cool world the acting's really bad brad pitt certainly isn't there yet this is real early in his career like post thelma and louise kind of stuff and brad pitt seemed to be the one most on board with it gabriel byrne he's not very good this was really miscast brad pitt at least has the look of it and at least in that poster looks a little cartoonish and I think was probably more down with this apparently from what I've read than anyone else so out of everyone I have less offense about Brad Pitt even though I don't think he's very good Gabriel Byrne I think was miscast maybe someone like John Turturro would probably play a better underground cartoonist than like Gabriel Byrne who I don't really think knows who our crumb is Kim Basinger gets a lot of shit for this I some I think she just committed to it and that seems to be what she says in interviews and just really threw her Herself into this bizarre strange movie and was kind of down for it I've heard some places and I've heard it from Ralph Bakshi himself that she midway through wanted a movie that she could play to kids in the hospital and stuff like an animated movie I'm a little confused by that 
quote just because it seems like if she knew who Ralph Bakshi was, like, and certainly someone said, oh, he's the guy who made, like, Fritz the Cat and stuff, like, that that would not be appropriate. So I've always wondered, not that I think Ralph Bakshi's a liar, but that just seems like a little outlandish to me. I don't know. I have some faith in Kim Basinger. I've heard other people review this and say, oh, well, she was just in Batman. She also, you know, was in L.A. Confidential and won an Oscar for L.A. Confidential. And I think she's actually a good actress. I never thought her potential was utilized as well as it could have been when I look at her, especially in the 80s and 90s. I know for various reasons, probably she wasn't in more stuff and that's a shame. But I think she overcommits to this and I do think a lot of the thing with Ralph Bakshi's dialogue, it's not like normal dialogue. I think voice actors are a little better at it than like live action movie actors really and I, I feel like they could never overcome it even Brad Pitt who's probably a little more he's not no one's good I don't know why I'm acting like anyone's good Kim Basinger was nominated for a Razzie I think Gabriel Burns actually probably the worst one in this because he's just so like unconvincing there's a lot of plot strands in this that make no sense the whole thing with Brad Pitt's character Frank and his mom in the beginning which doesn't make a lot of sense it like has all these weird Oedipal elements to it that like doesn't have anything to do with the movie it's just like there it's just like hey this guy has this creepy relationship with his mom. Now, cool world. And you're like, oh, I don't, I'm supposed to be down with this youth movie. And now you made me feel weird about this guy with his mom. I don't thanks. I don't know what is going on most of the time with the ideas of this movie. Part of me thinks Ralph Bakshi like went, you know what? Fuck this. Let's just fuck this up and make this awful. If I found out that were true, I believe it. Especially the cartoons in front of it and everything like that made me think that were true because it's just so like, what the fuck? fuck like there's so many times when i'm watching this i'm like what like it's just so bad and like i don't understand why people are really brought to cool world i don't understand the rules of it it doesn't make any sense like why even have a detective from the 40s other than to rip off roger rabbit why have this character of hollywood other than to rip off jessica rabbit there's just so many things about it that you're like okay you're blatantly doing these things but you're not really doing anything with them and i think you'd have to be high trying to find this like movie that's trying to have tangibility which clearly does and giving it some tangibility is a frustrating and boring experience that makes you go like what is this like what is exactly trying to go on in this movie and you never quite figure it out as a viewer and I don't think they figured it out while they're fucking making it because it's just like blah Ralph Bakshi disowned this movie never made a major theatrical film again he made a TV movie which is his only live action only film called Cool and the Crazy or Cool and Crazy starring Jared Leto and Alicia Silverstone which uh, was made for Showtime and he did things like like uh, Spicy City and recently The Last Days of Coney Island. So he wasn't done done, but it's kind of a shame that he comes back, he had a horrible time trying to get various projects off the ground and it never worked out. And then he makes Cool World. And what's interesting, if you read some of the reviews, a lot of the reviews, the critics start with going like, I really don't want to give this a bad review. Almost everyone understood what they were doing doing by giving Ralph Bakshi a bad review because he was so unique and they all liked Ralph Bakshi like Ebert, Moulton, like a lot of major critics it seemed to be were giving this bad reviews just because they're like this is just so unfathomably awful. Not that they should be light on him just because of who he is but it felt like like critically everyone was a little sad about doing this and didn't really want to destroy it like they did. And that's very interesting. It, it, it kind of almost feels like culturally everyone wanted this to be good and it just didn't work out. Ralph Bakshi is a unique name and he's a name in animation. He's a name in animation because he did something that no one else could do. But I think this is just so awful on so many levels. You can't really deny how bad it is. I mean, it's just a shame. I think this is a great movie to have on in the background at a party or in a club. It's just not a movie that you want to experience and really like. It's more of a cult movie just because it is one of a kind, but its awfulness ruins its one of a kind distinctiveness and its destruction of its own unique interpretation is its ultimate flaw, unfortunately. I feel ashamed almost. Like, I feel bad reviewing it and giving it a negative review and shitting on it as, as the critics used to because you you want Ralph Bakshi to succeed. And I think that's the biggest, shittiest thing about Cool World. What I will always remember about this movie is the posters, those iconic posters in the comic books I read growing up. I will always remember the ones where it's just Hollywood. I remember the ones with her and Brad Pitt that I'd always see in blockbuster video growing up. I think it's an interesting experiment for someone else to 
combine live action and animation and do more of an adult thing and even try to do that in the 90s when animation was having a comeback and animation by the way was appealing to adults beavis and butthead ren and snippy were successful at this point and it was like 92 so these were about to launch like right after this and cool world was a major thud i mean they put a lot of money in the promotion to it i mean i was well aware of this thing and there's a lot of movies in 1992 that when i was a kid i wasn't aware of as well as they put hollywood on the hollywood sign and everyone hated it and there were protests and like to have this like beautiful cartoon woman on the hollywood sign i think it's like actually kind of fun to do stuff like that i like that kind of showmanship i understand the sexism and the idea of the patriarchy and stuff like that but it feels like this movie couldn't catch a break ever and it didn't end up even being good i think design wise it's a mess of Fleischer stuff and kind of ugly 90s designs and just I've called movies a mess before but this is like the ultimate mess it's like unwatchable in some sections mess it's just unfathomable how much of a mess you're seeing in front of you in the frame what's going on in the back of you there's parts you're like why is this even in the movie you kind of wonder if the studio actually like watched it before they released it and like Ralph actually fucked with it and I'm not sure what exactly happened completely with it you know I know someone said it's one of the worst animated films of all time I don't want to give it that label but I think it is probably one of the least watchable animated films of all time and that's a very sad thing for me to say so I think when it comes to Cool World maybe see everything else and then see this this is like the absolute depths and the bottom of someone's filmography and it's the bottom that you never want to go down and wish that director never had to and Cool World is at that bottom and I don't think there's any way it's coming out of that shit so if you've seen Cool World and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like.